Yeah, g'day and welcome back to this old lathe channel. Long time viewers know that I've been working on modernizing this beautiful old Schaublin 125 CNC lathe, replacing all its electrics and electronics and giving it a modern Linux CNC controller. I've got the first motor installed, but now it needs connecting. The motor's main power cable fits through this hole quite nicely. But unfortunately, the encoder cable has got a big connector on it. So I'm going to have to de-pin this connector, put it through and then put it back together. I'm pretty sure that's a Molex connector. Using my ferrules, I found one that looks like it's probably the right size to be a pin puller, but it's too short. So now I need to make a very special pin extractor. So what's going to be special about it? Well, thank you for asking. This is going to be the Goldilocks of pin extractors. Why Goldilocks, you might ask? Well, last week I already rummaged through my ice cream container of random drill bits, found this little one, which is about one and a something millimeters, 1.3 or so, and figured, hey, that looks perfect, and made a pin extractor. The only problem with that is it's too small. Now, not being the sort of person to let insignificant concepts like experience guide my life, I immediately went through my miscellaneous ice cream container again, and found a slightly bigger one. So on the other end, I made a slightly bigger pin extractor, which was of course too big and also didn't work. Well, that's enough of that. I looked up and found out that those Molex pins are probably 62 thousandth of an inch across and converted that to metric and went and bought a 1.6 and a 1.7 millimeter drill to try and make a proper one. The YouTube algorithm put me onto a brand new channel called Roughly Precise, where he's only got two videos up so far. Whoops, I forgot to send a drill at first. In his first video, he made a pretty cool power scraper completely from scratch. While the audio is pretty ropey, I mean, it was his first attempt at a video. Go and have a look, it's, it's worth checking out. And then his second video, he uses a power scraper to scrape a granite uh, block into a precision square by the looks of it. Pretty unusual sort of project. His content's probably not for everyone, but I like scraping videos. I'll do the last bit with a sharp aluminium insert. So I'm aiming for 2.5, so another 26 hundredths. For this sort of thing, you kind of appreciate Bolly's history as a watchmaking lathe. Does it work? So I got the first one out. Is that actually Molex or is that something different? It's got like two different diameters on it. The small diameter fitted my original too small extraction tool and the bigger diameter actually fitted my too large extraction tool reasonably well. I don't know how I got that out because the new extraction tool doesn't actually fit it. Can any of you identify exactly what sort of pin that is? I haven't seen any Molex pins with that two diameter sort of form. The manual doesn't list what type of connector that is. So if anyone can identify that pin, please enter its name in the comments section so that I can look for the correct pin extractor. Once I do get these two drive motor cables down through this hole, I need to make up a new gland to close off this area. So I'll do that on a 3D printer. Since I hadn't used my printer in ages, I was having some bed adhesion and bed height adjustment issues. So I had to print a few benches and get some support calls in to Hamish and Jörg before I managed to get it sorted out. Wow, that's an ugly benchy, huh? Thanks for your help, guys. Heading to the time-lapse photography point each layer still causes a few issues, but I finally managed to make the parts I needed. So these are those two 3D printed parts, which go in the gland nut. So that should work nicely. Mail time. Oh good, it's the arbor for the shell mill I bought last week. Hey, 
And I also got another ER32 collet chuck because I was constantly having to change out tools on the ones I had. If you watched last week, you know I found the anti-rotation feature on the collet closer broken. So let's go ahead and fix that, shall we? So these are the parts I've got. I'll just add a bit of junk and let's fix it. This is just a thread protector I made up. When people who don't know me visit me in my shop, one of the first things they all ask is, so what do you make with all of these machines? And yeah, I don't really have a good answer for that because basically all I make with these machines is bits for the machines. Next up I need to put the chamfer on it at 45 degrees. Because I'm using collets it doesn't matter they'll be turning backwards. It's going to be interesting once I finish the Schaublin project and also repair the gearbox on the Dewall and a bunch of other little projects I've got in mind, what I actually do then with these things. I have a fair few ideas for both photography related and also engine related projects that would kind of interest me, but don't hold your breath. I guess I could have also done the taper with that tool. You know, there really is something about a manual lathe like this little Bolly 4LV. They're a really handy tool. There's something about just, you know, for this sort of job where you don't need a lot of accuracy for most of the parts, it's just super fast to be able to throw in a collar and then, you know, turn the parts, drill, taper, whatever. On my mini lathe CNC conversion, I made the mistake of only putting one jog wheel on it and a switch to select between X and Y. On the Schaublin, I'm definitely gonna add two jog encoders dedicated for their individual axes so that you can use it like a manual lathe when you want to. Just one hand on each, each dial and away you go. Next, I need to dial this piece in to turn around. I'm not sure how often I'll use the Schaublin in a sort of fly-by-wire manual mode, but it's nice to have that capability on a lathe. I think it's much more useful on a lathe than on a mill with two hands, two control axes. of a clean off. I figured I'd throw some bluing on it just to make it look like it's supposed to be there. While only a very minor project in the big scope of things, a project like this is just a collection of lots and lots of little minor projects. So each one you knock off is one less, sooner or later we'll be finished. So there we have it. Another week's gone by. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get more done on this stuff, but it's just the way it is. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next week.